How are you feeling today? Aren't you excited? Yeah. <laughs> about? <laughs> you excited about me? Okay, uh, you should be really excited because today we are celebrating our youth day and we have very special guests. The special guest, I, I don't know if you know, like uh, most of the time when you plant a tree, like you don't take the seeds with, like as it grows and branches away, the seeds will fall far away from the tree. However, today with Islamic Relief, the seeds get to meet their own roots. If you know what I mean, the roots. We will get to know our roots today since we are the seeds. We are not yet to be branches. We're still the seeds. We're still growing within this tree. So today we are so honored to get to meet our roots. Dr. Hani, the founder of Islamic Relief, Islamic Relief the World. Not only South Africa, we have so many branches now. Over 50 countries now, they have Islamic Relief operating there. So welcome, Dr. Hani. Uh, welcome to Incubator of Dreamers. This is our pilot project in Durban for Islamic Relief, KZN. So you get to meet our first seed under programs, KZN, Islamic Relief, implementing it with other partners. Welcome, sir. Okay, I'm going to start by introducing other guests who are with us. Uh, our staff from our KZN office. Uh, we have our brother uh, Imran here on my left. And we have our brother here. We call him Mulana in the office. <laughs> and uh, we have our brother Shad Day Jr. next to my line manager, brother Shad again. And I think you are familiar with uh, my line manager, Brother Shat. Yes, uh, welcome, guys. Uh, I'm happy that you are joining us today. We are also celebrating our Youth Day, uh, which uh, normally happens in, on June the 16th for South Africa. But we decided to celebrate it with our founder. OK, to start with the program, um, I'm going to take uh, you through to uh, our journey with this project, the Incubator of Dreamers. Um, this is the project that was initiated after like assessing the need for KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, this province is prone to so many disasters, including those that are caused by uh, people themselves. So in KZN, we, we had so many problems uh, during the past two years, uh, there were Riots, like whereby people were vandalizing the stores because they were unemployed because of COVID. So Incubator of Dreamers came at that time whereby there's a real need. And we are also prone to flooding, which is destroying the whole uh, province uh, as a whole. So Incubator of Dreamers is meant to get those people from previously disadvantaged communities and uh, mostly targeting our youth to try and capacitate them in terms of starting their own businesses. Um, this project, like I said before, we are trying to address those gaps that we find in our communities. Uh, these youth, uh, Dr. Hani, they are from different communities within Etiquini municipality. It's a very large area. So we selected from different municipalities so that we can see what to do with the needs that we have identified within those communities. So we have, like initially we had like 100 youth, of which from there we had to reselect uh, the other competitive ones who can take their business ideas further. So our objectives there was to try and partner like with them to make better communities. And we also trying to create the, amb the ambassadors within their communities. And we want to get them involved uh, in different projects. So this project is, um, is meant to bring differences like local community, like uh, we need to see economic growth within those communities before we can take it further to other provinces. 
So what we are expecting from this project, we need to, or like we are expecting these people to come out being skilled uh, based on the curriculum that we developed. Like uh, we assess them on what skills they have or how far they've gone with their studies because most of them are unemployed and they finished metric but didn't, they didn't get their chance to go to tertiary. So this project was, to, was meant to address such gaps. So, so far, like we are confident that we have our team of 50 youth and we have well capacitated them in terms of whatever skills were needed for them to start specific business ideas. So uh, this project, again, we are expecting that we have self-sustained businesses at the end. Like there are so many like key activities that we do. I'll take you through to uh, when I'm going through the model. Uh, that will ensure that uh, they are well capacitated to end up being able to handle businesses and their businesses can also be sustained. It also has to contribute to what we call sustainable development. Like we need the youth that is well educated enough to represent us out there through Islamic relief and develop uh, our communities further. And also, it is a, like it is a chance for them to have such an education that they couldn't have uh, throughout uh, this time when they were not with us. So, like I said before, um, we targeting we initially targeted hundred youth, but we are already almost at the end of the project. So, we selected hundred youth initially, those who are between eighteen to thirty four years, and uh, those people are unemployed, both males and females, and. Um, those who've got interesting like uh like business ideas those are the ones that we selected and uh in terms of uh the model for the project we started initially with uh the campaigns we had the campaigns going around the areas and then we had what we call the workshop whereby we bring together the youth that we selected and then we had to present our roadmap for this project and uh, from there, we brought together all the stakeholders like that we can work with in this project so that we can see how we can assist in each other in terms of making sure that this project becomes a success at the end. So, so far, like um, we have different uh, activities, like we have capacity building, uh, youth engagement, and we have what we call incubation, hence the name Incubator of Dreamers. And we also have uh, what we call uh, the mentorship program, which falls also under incubation. So this is the model that we created for this project. We uh, developed this to take place within 31 days, like uh, the whole process will take 31 days. However, every month we do a different activity. Like let's say this month we do the training courses, the next month we do the youth engagement and the other months like towards the end we're doing incubation. So far, this is where we are. We are doing the mentorship as well as youth engagement. Today is our youth engagement day for the, to celebrate the youth day. So we are almost done with our, our project. We will be left only with the closing ceremony. Okay, what we've done so far, these are some of the pictures of what we've done. This is when we had our pre-inception, uh, uh, just conducting our final selection and presenting the roadmap for the project. And after that, we had what we call the inception ceremony where we all gathered uh, with other stakeholders uh, to celebrate the launch of our project. And then we moved into what we call capacity building. This is where we had uh, different training courses. We had other things like team building to make sure that these people can be able to work together. And then we also have the youth engagement like today. With incubation, which is the stage where we are now, we took the youth last week uh, for incubation, the fashion one, like we have different groups dealing with different business ideas. So last week we took the ones that are dealing with, uh, that are trying to build a business that is focusing on fashion. Uh, here they are, they went to the factories to learn uh, how to use different machines, also how to choose the material and everything. 
Okay. Um, I'll now hand over to our facilitator to further elaborate on what we are doing with this program. Professor so Sio has welcomed our guest, but uh, on behalf of the Young Leaders Academy, who's partnering with uh, Islamic Relief, again, we welcome our guest, Dr. Al-Tanga, to our shores. And just a little background about what this program is all about. I'm not going to repeat what Professor uh, Sio has mentioned, but as she stated, that we are at the tail end of the program, and there were three components to it. Firstly, we had the boot camps, uh, then we've got the incubation, and finally, uh, the prototypes that we're going to be preparing. So the two main parts to it, we won the boot camps, and in the boot camp, we gave them the essential skills, skills that are not taught in schools and universities. And uh, the second part of the boot camp is to teach them about entrepreneurship. Uh, the other component is on incubation, so I'll very quickly cover the two components. Under the critical skills, these are the skills that they don't teach them in schools and universities, and this is why the employers are saying, we've got jobs, even in South Africa, we've got jobs available, graduates are coming for interviews, but we are not employing most of them. Why? Because they are unemployable. They might have degrees and diplomas to the name, but these critical uh, essential skills they do not have, so critical thinking, problem solving, Collaboration, there's about 14 or 15 topics that we've done with them already. Conflict resolution, EQ, leadership, and so forth. And you know from experience, as you stay longer in business, there's more need for EQ than IQ. So that's that's the first component. The second component that we emphasize on is entrepreneurship. To take them from the beginning to the end of entrepreneurship. So the things that we covered, some of the things we covered was market research and community needs analysis, uh, project research. Uh, what we did was many of them had never had experience of selling anything. So we then had an exercise of how to manufacture ginger beer and how to sell it, how to cost it, how to make profits. So they went out into the communities, they did the sales, they came back, they had a look at the profits they made, they distributed the profits among themselves. So just was to give them a hands-on experience of entrepreneurship. Then what we did was we took, as the sister Sio said, we had 100, 100 participants initially, then 18 groups were formed, they did their pitch uh, to the funders, and we decided that there were 10 best projects. And from the 10 best projects, we then put the, we put the groups in teams, and the teams were based on their geographical locations. And each team, when they went out and did research, they had about 10 to 12 different ideas, different things the communities wanted. They came back, we brainstormed the ideas, we reduced it to three or four different products per team. Again, they went back into the community, they did product research, and the communities then told them, we just are interested in this one product for your team. So that is how we ended up with 10 products and services. Uh, in putting them into the team, what we then decided was we gave each member of the team designations, we gave them, made them CEOs, CFOs, marketing managers, etc. Uh, we gave them notes on it, we taught them about it, and then we had a whole day session on how to manage your finances, how to develop business plan, etc. So this was the entrepreneurship journey on the on the theoretical side. Then the other thing that we had was the youth empowerment. So these were the different youth empowerment initiatives we had. Also what's very important for us is for the learners to be 
cognizant of our environment. So therefore, we focused a lot on social entrepreneurship, eco-innovation, not to damage the environment, uh, business ethics, both from the Western concept of business ethics as well as from the Sharia concept, and corporate social investment. So every company, you notice when the three companies are going to do the presentations, some of them might even tell you what they're going to do with the profits, how they're going to be distributed in the communities. So the 10 products, uh, Dr. Banda, the 10 products that were chosen are the following. One is uh, food, and that is active cuisine. And active cuisine, they are looking at providing the different dishes that are found in Africa to the people in South Africa. There are lots of foreigners in South Africa to cater for their needs as well as for South Africans to get a taste of African cuisine. So that's one of them. Another one is a fashion one. Uh, and this is what Sister Sio just mentioned. Last week we took them on to a uh, company visit, and I'll talk about that a little later. Then there's three who have gone into farming, two of them into the chicken business, uh, and one of them is in the farming itself, and this group is going to make a presentation to us in a, in a short while. One of the companies has gone into baking, happy bakes. One of the companies is going to be providing uh, a cyber cafe and internet facilities for people in the community. And there's something very unique. Uh, one of the team is going into aquaponic farming, so they are going to be cultivating fish as well as using the, uh, the symbiosis between the fish as well as the vegetation that we're going to be growing. And then the final two are career navigation. So the, out of the 10, initially we were hoping that we'll get 50% of going to a profitable endeavor, a product, and about 50% of going to services. But it appears that the community also wanted more the products and the services. So there will be just one service that will be provided, and that is career navigator. And this team is going to do a presentation for us at the moment. And finally, we've got the events planning. So these are the 10 different products and services that were chosen, and funding is going to be given to them. <coughs> as far as the youth empowerment, we feel that it's important not only for them to become business people, but also to give back into the community, and therefore the important focus on youth empowerment. There's four youth empowerment days that we got in our program. One was the activism day. And on that day, we had uh, community activists who came and spoke to the students. Then the last one, we had Freedom and Human Rights Day. Today is the Youth Day. And the fourth one is going to be Environmental Day. So that is all the first part of our uh, program. The second part, very important part of the program, is on the incubation side. So the idea is, once we give them funding, they're going to work on their prototypes. And they're going to start doing business. They're going to earn profits, inshallah. They'll come back to us on a regular basis, giving us their progress. And uh, eventually, depending on how well they're doing, they're going to make a second presentation, and they will get further funding. So as far as integration is concerned, we had a number of guest entrepreneurs, very successful entrepreneurs, lots of them from the communities from which these students come. So we had a serial entrepreneur of six or seven different businesses. We had another gentleman who is an expert in marketing and PR. And these are all young startups, I would say between three and ten years old. Another young businessman who started a laundry business. Then one of the people who came is an IT and robotic expert. He was a student of mine in one of the other programs. And he, Dr. Banda, he is the first person in Africa to develop a robot. And his robot was developed even, and it was announced, and it was presented to the world, even before Elon Musk's. So he came and did a presentation as well. Uh, then we had a very interesting gentleman who came last week. This person used to work with me at uh, Al Baraka Bank when I was there, and he was the driver. And because of uh, economic situation, he lost his job. He had nowhere to go, and he then decided to become a, an Uber driver. And in a, in one year, he's now earning four times what he was earning 
after 15 years at the bank. So he gave his experiences to the students, and the students realized that even if a person has an education and he has not the right attitude, uh, he can make it in life. Then we had very successful female entrepreneurs, and one of the highlights was we got six students from one of the top Islamic private schools, and they had a competition of entrepreneurship, and they won national awards. So the six students came and made a presentation to our uh, participants on their entrepreneurship journey. So as part of our program, we had these guest entrepreneurs coming and giving their experiences. And finally, on the incubation side, the intention is to take each of the teams to visit companies, to learn firsthand how these companies operate, and also to get uh, the leaders of those companies to mentor them. So we had experience, one experience thus far, we took the closing team to four different companies. And what we did, we deliberately selected the four companies. One was an underwear and uh, streetwear manufacturing company. One was the largest schoolwear manufacturer in KZN. One was uh, a very big clothing manufacturer that manufactures for most of the chain stores in South Africa. It got 90 retail outlets as well. Uh, and the fourth one was a sports manufacturer. So this, these are just photographs of the four places that they went to. This was the uh, underwear manufacturer, and they even allowed other students to try out the machines. The second place they went to, this is the company that provides uh, clothing to chain stores, and they've got over 700 machinists. The third one was we took them to one of the largest sportswear manufacturers in KZN. And what's very interesting, Dr. Banna, is the fourth one where we took them to one of the largest uh, school manufacturers, school manufacturers in KZN, our province. They've actually given our students work to do already. So they have contracted our students uh, to prepare these uh, gifts that we do. One final point before I terminate is also what we try to do is we try and empower our students and get them involved with the community. So there is a lady who is going to be one of our guests today from an organization uh, called, <coughs> called Africology. So we got our African students to partner with Africology. We went to one of her uh, Conferences we had recently had all of the students. They went into the kitchen, they saw how the fusing is made, and coming out of that, Africology then donated an entire mobile kitchen to them. So, this is the type of partnership we try and uh, have with uh, our service providers. So, that is all from my side. This is a brief overview of the entire program. We've now reached about 80% of the program is complete. As soon as the students get their funding, they can go out and manufacture and show us what they do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what we've got lined up for, for the next 20, 25 minutes is we've got three of the teams who come and make short five-minute presentations on their projects and then we Give it open for questions and answers as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kanye, and I am from the group. Uh, AfriBakes and these are my teammates and AfriBakes is a bakery business that was established on the essence of on the basis of our African essence matched with the love for baking, hence the name AfriBakes. So our business is um, about fulfilling the need. The need, the main driving force for our business is creating a bakery business that is closer to the people. Well, Clements is a very large community and we don't have a bakery in the local area. We have to source out the, bake, the baked goods from other from other businesses so we thought why not take advantage of that opportunity and we thought let's come together because we have this mutual love for baking and let's start a business that's going to be beneficial for both our communities and ourselves in terms of building our 
ICAS economy, which is the township economy based on people going into the into the into the community and not building businesses and branching out. So we wanted to keep the economy in our in our township. Our main products and services are white bread, brown bread, banana bread, and all types of pastries. These are some of our testimonies um, of the work that we've done because we've had our business for the past six months and we have some testimonies that are displayed on the slide. So our main target is the community and at a larger scale, we want to, um, we want to establish business, establish a relationship between ourselves and the supermarkets in our communities. So we want to, to eventually supply them with our goods. This is our CSI project that we want to implement. We want to donate 3% of our profits to cater for a local school as their breakfast service. So I'll hand it over to one of my colleagues so she can better elaborate on how the overview of the project uh, on our side was. Our experience, we have learned the importance of hard work, working together as a team, uh, leadership skills, communication skills, share ideas and expand on those ideas. We, were, we are grateful to be the part of this program, which is the incubator of, dreamer, of dreamers, which is the program that assists young people to become young leaders and great uh, business owners, businessmen and women. In this program, we have learned a lot to start a business and how, 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 how to ensure that our business grow. From a, to build a business plan, um, how to, 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 to get sponsors, how to communicate amongst ourselves, how to solve the problem, problem within our company. We would like to acknowledge uh, Islamic Relief, Young Leaders Academy and Incubators of Dreamers for incubating, for incubating us in this program. Thank you. Thanks, Marian Hill Organics. I'm with my team members. Okay. What is organic farming? Organic farming is hey. organic farming is agriculture process that produce healthy food, healthy plants, and healthy soil. I'm confusing. And is not using modified seeds and also we are we are using natural fertilizers our product our product we have spinach we have carrots we have tomatoes we have beetroot we are cho we have chosen these four vegetables because they are faster to grow and we will also have onions potatoes, cabbage, at a later stage as the company grows. Our target market will be supermarkets, street vendor, households, and the restaurants. Okay. Our team, Marine Hill Organics, stands a very, very good chance of um, making this business happen. Why I say so? Because we have our sister Nuran, who is who she is, over seven years in the farming industry. Plus, we have uh, Mr. Mkize Kabazela, who has a diploma in agriculture, and he's been in the industry for over thirty years. So he's our backbone. We're hoping that he will help us go through all this process. Our winning methods: we plan to supply our competitors with our fresh produce because. They're getting it from Claywood. I think that's the biggest market in uh, in Durban where everyone is getting their, their fresh product from. So we, we, we're coming closer to them in order for them to travel in for over 13 kilometers to go get their fresh product. We are there for them and this is our solutions to them. Um, 
it took us over three months to get to meet to the counselor just to see his face you know just to see his face it took us over three months and this was a very very long process but alhamdulillah everything went well finally we got him we met him we sat with him we tried to to uh, this thing to ask him to come see the place phone calls messaging him emailing him but finally it happened and alhamdulillah we got the land and uh, it was given to us by the councillor he came saw the place just uh post through so you see that is that is our land and it's approximately you got the this thing there and you got a river there going past through it this is the outskirts of marine hill alhamdulillah we got a river that is giving access to water so the soil is very fertile and we we done the test we've been there with mr Mbesuma, the kawazela guy over 30 years we tested the soil and we said to see to see that the fruits and the vegetables will grow up very well this is some of our work that we have done so far and as you all can see it's very green and it's looking healthy too alhamdulillah <laughs> I'd like to thank Islamic Relief for giving us this opportunity. This is, I don't know, uh, what can, can, can express this feeling. And we thank the IOD, um, Incubator of Dreamers, and Young Leaders Academy for giving us this platform to, to try and, and be someone in the community. Our experience throughout the program, Alhamdulillah, we have learned a very, very lot from it from the leadership skills, mentoring, and alhamdulillah, I can't, I can't express it anymore. We're so overwhelmed. We, we're glad for this opportunity. Live life simple and simple live. Um, to our esteemed guests, facilitators, and my fellow peers, allow me to greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ismail Monjin Jela, and this is my team. And our organization is Career Navigator. Our aim at Career Navigator is to develop and adapt young people and the youth for the world of work through allowing them opportunities for self-assessment, self-development, and then providing them with information and then uh, access to higher institutions as well as institutions whereby they can um, develop their skills. Um, our focus, we focus mainly on, firstly, from as early as grade nine learners, so that you provide them with the necessary information for decision making when it comes to picking the subject, because often they pick wrong subjects being influenced by their peers or what their parents want them to be, and then later on realize that this is not what they themselves wanted and they are stuck in life. So had they been given uh, self-awareness to be able to identify their own strengths and weaknesses when they were making those choices as early as choosing their subjects. And then we also focus on um, FET learners between grade 10 and 12. People who've already made the decision with the subject and are now realizing that they cannot manage with this subject and they want to change. They want to decide what it is that they want to do as their careers. And then we also want to focus on school leavers um, with skills development so that they can gain some skill, whether it's working with their hands and stuff like that, so that they can also earn a living and contribute to the community. And then also with tertiary students, people who are in institutions of higher learning, and they realize that the path they've chosen is not the path that they want to carry on with for the rest of their life, or that there's no employment in these industries. So we assist them to try and identify what it is that they can do and they can be, uh, they can lead a fulfilling career. Uh, with the research, we all know the situation of unemployment in our country. What we researched is how much of it, um, is as a result of bad career advice. And on the graph, what you see is, the rate of unemployment of graduates, people who've been to higher institutions but still cannot get employed due to having made wrong career decisions. And our objectives uh, at 
career navigator is firstly to provide timely and reliable information so that when it comes to the point of decision making, they make an informed decision. And then to provide school-based career education workshops. As we said, we want to focus on um, high school learners as early as grade nine and the FET learners. And then we want to grant equitable access to institutions of higher learning by assisting with application and information, explaining to the learners what is a diploma pass, what is a degree, what is APS, and how you can apply to institutions of higher learning, and um, what skills development centers are there that you can go to for skills development, as well as providing a, link a linkage between school and the industry, so that once you've acquired that skill or that education, we can link you up to a potential employment whereby you can get employed and earn a living. Um, as an organization, our main aim is not profit, but we do understand that we need to keep the lights on and to provide the service, it will come at a fee. So we'll, for the workshops, we charge about 20 rands per learner to give the career information and advice. And then with applications, to do an application, an application to an institution of higher learning is 50 rands. And for writing services, we charge 50 rands. Um, in our team, we have, um, I myself, I'm a qualified career guidance officer, and we also have a qualified IT systems management. And then um, we'll also take advantage of the extensive school network that you're going to be working with. And we, we've all matriculated, so we've all come to the point whereby we've made decision and we realized that there's a high demand for career guidance. Had I known better, I would have decided better. And then um, we also aim to continue to invest in continuous development of us, of our members, so that we can um, give better career guidance to our prospects. Our future plans as an organization is firstly to launch the organization and do the workshops and then have an office space of, because we are currently working from home. So once we have an office space, we'll be easier accessible. And then we aim to work with the Department of Basic Education. As we said, we want to start it as early as um, choosing subjects. So we want to partner with Department of Basic Education. And then uh, eventually we want to reach the point whereby we ourselves can offer certain skills development to our prospects. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, and appreciate Islamic Relief South Africa for the opportunity that they've provided us. Um, Young Leaders Academy for facilitating the whole process and then um, Incubator of Dreamers for the projects that they've organized for us. Thank you very much. I'll now pass on to my colleague for our experience through the program. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sendegi Lengwan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sendegi Lengwane. Uh, I would like to take you through our journey as we are here now. Uh, before we come here, we were doing different things. Some have already been in business, but uh, not being business-minded as we have learned here. And we have also, some of us have been working, but, but uh, being part of this program, some have quit their jobs because it was not allowing them to grow and also to learn more things. So as we are here, we are very much fortunate and we are blessed to be part of this journey with the incubators of dreamers and islamic relief we are so grateful to be part of this incubation thank you so much with uh, our guest i'm really proud of you i know the journey was not easy but we are somewhere today because we managed to work together to come thus far. Okay, now, I think it would be nicer if we understand our roots better, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> are you excited? Yes. I hope you'll get, uh, like, you, you listen carefully to the messages that we are about to receive, implement them, and think broader when you are doing your work from today. Okay, now uh, let's welcome our, our founder, Dr. Hani. I'm sure he's got a very, very interesting message for us. He will uh, like tell us more about how we get to become who we are today. Thank you, Dr. Hani. Thank 
you. Thank you. I always try to be happy, but you make me happier. This was my dream long time ago, more than 20 years ago. The first cow we bought was for Albania in the 90s, for Bangladesh also in the 90s, to empower the local community, to empower the local community. And my second project, which I'm still failing, not be able to do it, is create leadership from the young people. This was an idea in 2004, and you started it here. At least the seed of the idea was planted in Los Angeles, in the airport, me and Dr. Majd, but is blossoming and growing in South Africa. How many miles between South Africa and mean uh, Durban and Los Angeles? Can some one of you get me the distance, please? Los Angeles to Durban. So you can imagine that this seed flew from Los Angeles in 2004 to be here in Durban 2023. It took 19 years to fly the distance of the discussion from Los Angeles to Durban. How many miles? Why well, you are not savvy enough? What is you talk about social media? Huh? Huh? Stand up, stand up. 10,000 what? 10,000 miles. How many kilometers? So those people don't believe in miles here. Yeah. Seven, how, exactly. The exact number. If you're a businesswoman or a businessman, you have to give the right figure. 17,094. See, the seed flew 17,000 kilometers to arrive here. Took 19 years to start blossoming or growing or to become vegetation. I was going to speak about something else, but I will, I was writing something that you inspired me to write about what do you mean by making business? Definitions, parameters, principles, values. Business is about delivering services to community. Delivering services. It's about producing quality products. It's about creating local community markets. It's about building communities. It's about being honest, transparent. It's about making marginal profits. One of the most successful businessmen in Egypt, he decided because he was an orphan and he was a poor man, al Fuqasat Mahmoud al-Arabi, taught Shiva Masr. He was orphan. And when he became a businessman, you know how much he was making profit? One to three percent maximum. And now, when he died, he was a billionaire. You got it? It's not 10, it's not 20, it's not 50. The more you serve with less marginal profit, the more you make profit. Business is about connecting with the community and driven by the community. Business is about employing young people and the marginalized communities. Business is about treating staff as shareholder with you, as partners. This was Mahmoud al-Arabi was building what we call it social partnership. Social partnership. You work for me, I work for you as a partner. I'm a partner with the employees, the staff, and a partner with the community as well. Business is about respecting customers, not fooling customers. 
Business about being philanthropic to help everybody. Business about improving the quality of the product. You keep improving. You do not do the same thing every time. The bakery, the other one, the organic uh, food industry, as well as the career, guiding the career, the uh, guiding the people for the better career for themselves. Business is about investing in the community. Not using the community only, but investing in the community. Business is about creativity, innovation, pioneering. Don't stand still. Sell the same product for 10 years. Business is about reducing commodity prices, not increasing it. Business is about adopting justice or applying justice, fairness, inclusivity, and equality inside your business and outside your business. Business is about educating the public. Keep educating them for their rights. Don't keep fooling the public and hide things from them. Business also about raising awareness. This product is X stock. This product expired date is in two weeks' time or three weeks' time, or six weeks' time, not to change the expiry date or take it off. We know that. Or you say this manufactured in UK, but it's manufactured in China. Okay? Business is about giving back. Giving back to whom? To your family, to your business, and to the community. The three partners together, you have to look after your family. You have to look after your business to invest again in your business. Then you have to look after the community, which is giving sadaqah, zakah, or philanthropic activities. Business about research studies. Don't carry on doing business without making research, without reading, without learning from others. Business is about accountability. To whom? To whom? You are accountable to your intention, your nafs, your soul. You are accountable to the community, to the government, and to the customers. You have to be accountable to someone. Business also is about discovering talents. As some of you were talking about talents. Because the state education does not uh, discover talents because it gives you a system whether you are very good studying the subject or not you have to succeed in most of them but maybe I don't like the state system create another system to discover the talent of the young people at young age one of the brothers from the second group or the first group said it took me or took us three months to see him. Who said that? Come on, Mr. Him. Come here, please. It took him three months to see him. Who is the first him and who is the second him? Oh, the first him was the counselor. And second him second was him. you. <laughs> it took me 40 years to see him. Because now Islamic Reef is nearly 40 years old. And to come to Durban today, after 40 years, to see you, so my journey was more difficult than the three months. <laughs> you got it? Thank you. I traveled the whole distance for 40 years, non-stop to be with you, with all of you. Short message that uh, doctor just prepared whilst he was listening to you. Now, 
I think we need to take this opportunity while the doctor is here. If you all got any questions, I'm sure you got questions on the entrepreneurship journey. It's not easy to be an entrepreneur, but with doctors 40 years of or more of experience, let's let's uh, get some benefit out of it. So let's ask the doctor questions. Any questions you have about business, about entrepreneurship, about life in general, about giving back to the community, this is what you've got an opportunity now. So let's open it up quickly. Anyone's got questions? Don't feel shy. Yeah, one question from each group. Yeah, one question from each team. So, yeah, so just uh, discuss among yourselves and one person can ask a question. Thank you. Uh, by the way, by the way, I want to be grilled or boiled or roasted or discanned. Which one you want to do? Barbecue. I'm, 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 the, I'm, I'm the menu of the barbecue. <laughs> Come on. Come here. Because the public have to see you. Public must see you, sir. No, 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 no. Carry on, carry on, carry on. It's very nice clothes. I wish I have something like this. <laughs> Bismillah. It's a pleasure, Mr. Okay, I have a question here for my team. That, um, as you have stated, that uh, it took you 40 years to see us, to see that uh, your vision, what you aimed, it became possible and it's happening. I would like to know that uh, the challenges you faced during the process of uh, running your company how many times have you faced how many times have you faced uh, difficulties maybe where you have faced the uh, challenges that that might make you to want to give up but what kept you moving on until thank you let's see. can i take the microphone thank you. thank you thank you brother we started with no vision was no fund, was no office, was no telephone, was no desk, was no great supporters of businessmen or businesswomen. We started as young people, wanted to do something for Africa because there was a famine in Ethiopia at that time. Nothing great. First donation was 60, uh, 20 pence. From a young child. But we knew that we want to help. The only slogan was help, help, help. Nothing else. If you have an idea, treat the idea like a seed. You have to hold it, then find the soil, a fertile soil. Then you have to stand next to the soil to see it coming up as vegetation, coming up as a tree. I'm protecting it from wild animals and birds to kill it. Till it becomes fruitful. Then you invite all the animals and birds and human beings to come and eat the fruit. So they will take the seeds of your fruit and they will drop it in different parts of the world. That's why when we started look, talking about the seed in 2004 in Los Angeles, the seed arrived here after 19 years in Durban in 2023. Challenges, there's no success without challenges. And there's no success without failure. And there's no success without keep trying. The people who are winning Nobel Peace Prize every year in different subjects have failed many, many times in their experiment, in the laboratory, in the writing, in the people, the community attacking them or misunderstanding them. Tell they prove right. Even the prophets, peace be upon all of them, have been attacked, tortured, and killed by the community that they came to 
serve and save. How they have been trying to do to Isa, Jesus, alayhi salam, Zakaria, what is the other, his son, uh, Yahya, John, killed as prophets because they wanted to spread a message. So nothing in life is easy life. And remember that money is not the only foundation of business. The businessman I was talking to him earlier on, he started at the age of six or seven years by 30 Egyptian pennies. And he was telling his brother, who was working in Cairo, please buy me something for the children during the festivity of Eid. 30 pence. He used to stand, sit in front of the small house in the countryside and selling these things. Out of the 30 pence, he can make 10 pence, 15 pence, or 5 pence. Hey, I make 10 pence. When he died, he died with a holding company, holding group, sorry. It's 15 or 16 companies and factories. Because he was focusing on looking at the idea and protecting the seed of the idea. He has seen many challenges. But when you focus, if you are going to play for Real Madrid or Barcelona or AC Milan or Sundown, <laughs> they're out now, huh? You beat an Ahli 5-2, huh? And now Ahli is in the final, you are not in the final. The Egyptian club called Ahli. The final is between the Moroccan and the Egyptian now, the North African. If, if Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi will keep kicking the ball to the box, he might shoot it once, twice, three, four, five, ten, twenty times. But they have to be at the right spot, at the right time, in front of the box or the net to get one goal in 90 minutes or in two hours. Cristiano or Messi or Musalah might fail many times in the same match. But at the end of the day, they are focusing to score. Keep trying to score and you will score. Keep trying to score and you will score. And when you fail, believe that your failure is a part of your success. Muhammad Ali, and you know him, he was stripped off the world championship of heavyweight boxing two or three times. He won it again. He won it again and again and again. Others have done it. Be optimistic, but working hard. Thank you. <laughs> Second table. This was just uh, heating me. I want somebody to grill me or to roast me or to discan me or to boil me. <laughs> you are a boiler? <laughs> yes, Bismillah. As come on, sister. Um, good morning to everyone. So I come from Umlazi and this is my team, Umlazi team. So one of my members asked for me to ask you, um, what problem did you identify having had this vision? Because here we're told to firstly identify the problem in your community and then find solutions on how to address that problem. So that was one of the question. And another question that I have personally, so as a human being, um, once you start um, having something that's globally acclaimed, something that's globally known, one tends to boast a lot. What kept you humble and what kept you going and what kept you grounded as a human being and what made you realize that as your seeds are germinating throughout the world, what made you realize that Africa also is worthy of this prestigious event and how far are you willing to go um, to see all of you seeds germinating. I hope I roasted you very well. No, no. <laughs> she is double bell. <laughs> Roasting and what? And, and grilling you. Okay, thank you. No problem. <laughs> so I'm very dry now. <laughs> <laughs> but a uh, very nice smell coming from my body. 
<laughs> the first question. Um, what problem did you identify in coming up? First of all, we have to understand that the solution is underneath your feet in the community. If you want to know the depth of the community, of, of the problem, ask the community. If you want to find the solution, ask the community as well. Community is the one who will lead you the right way because they suffer 24 seven, they can't sleep, they can't eat, they can't think, they can't get, so they have a problem. And they might tell you the way to find it out. And without having the community from the very beginning as partners, you are at loss. In the good old days, it was not good old days, the international organization used to come by a parachute and bring solution to you. All of them failed. Because the solution was made in Cairo, in London, in Riyadh, in Geneva, in Moscow, in New York. It doesn't fit. So one of the recommendations of the 2016 World Humanitarian Summit, which was in Istanbul, was localization, localization, localization. Empower the local community. Because they know the problem and they can have the solution. Needs. Our need is the mother of innovation. Our need is the foundation of innovation. All the great scholars who discover things, they were observing the cycle of life tirelessly till they found the solution or discovered how the cycle of life is going in animals, birds, planets, and other things. So both sides there to believe in the community, stand next to the community, is very tiring because working in the community is not easy. Not any one of us can take the burden of being pulled back from his jacket, from his trouser. Many dreams, but you have to be very patient. As I mentioned, this was... What you are doing now is a part of the prophetical message of all the prophets of God who came to try to do what? To serve, guide, save the community. All of them, from Adam, peace be upon him, to Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them. All of them were social workers, were human beings. They lived through their life in agony because they had a bigger dream for the community. What kept me going? When you focus on whom you serve, whom you serve will be elevating you. When you focus on the poor and the people living in the wilderness, the displaced, the marginalized, the refugees, the victims of rape, the orphans, the widows, those people, your connection with them, will keep you motivated forever. Because the Creator will, both about, will look at the relationship between you and the people you claim that you are serving. If he sees that you are sincere, and if you start to see that the, those individuals love you, you will be empowered forever. And you will be remembered forever. And you will never die. It will be an everlasting story Remembered by generation after generation after generation. Do we forget the struggle of Nelson Mandela? How many years he died? Do you remember the struggle of Patrice Lumumba in Congo? I cry for him, whether he's a Muslim or not. He stood not only for the people of Congo, he stood for humanity. But the anti-humanity who claim that they are democrat, civilized, are beasts, wild animals. To kill somebody like Patrice Lumumba, or what you call Jivara, Chi Jivara, in Latin. What, what, what you pronounce it? Chi Jivara, you know him? And others, or Malcolm X, or Dr. Martin Luther King, and others. Those people are still alive with us, not in body and flesh, but in the spirit and the guidance and enlightenment 
from their teaching, their teaching came through the suffering. That's why when people smile at your face, the orphans and the widows and the victims of rape, actually from women, you know that this smile is empowering you, is elevating you, is guiding you, is supporting you, and is teaching you. So keep with them. Be with them all the time. And be honest when you are with them, not to be with them just for a photograph or for a video or for a message or fundraising. But be with them to let them to feel that you are their sister, you are their brother, you are their uncle, you are their father, you are their mother. You are their servant. You are? You are? We all have to be servants, no matter who are we. If you feel that you are a servant, you'll be elevated, motivated, directed, guided, and forever remembered. Inshallah. Thank you for the grilling. And no, no, you grill and, uh, and no, you said it's a grill and uh, frying. So we need somebody to boil me, then ask somebody else to descan me. Okay, anybody else? Come on, brother. Descanning or, the, or boiling or deboning? <laughs> deboning, huh? <laughs> so, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much since you are the founder and the beginning of, of everything when it comes to Islamic relief. I'd firstly like to say that um, I come from Y Bank. Um, I've been a recipient, um, my family and I have been the re recipient of food parcels from Islamic Relief. No, you have been receiving your rights. Recipient, no, no, yes. your rights. Yes, sir. No, your rights. Rights. Okay, yes, thank you. Since I was a small beginning in primary school, I think I was eight years old, I think. So ever since then, up until now even, Islamic Relief is still supporting us. So first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for that. Um, I'd also like to ask you, because we are here trying to start businesses, and we are also trying to serve our communities and make the world better. Um, but we are also, also at the same time trying to make a living for ourselves. Um, on your side, because you, you started an NGO, and we, most of us, started private businesses. Now, private businesses have a bad reputation of being, um, how can I put this? They, they, they narcissistic. They like taking all to themselves. They don't yeah, give yeah. back. So for you in your experiences, um, because I'm sure you've been around these people, um, the comparison, do you think someone like us, because we might be naive now as young kids thinking we're going to save the world and everything, but is it realistic in your experience for us to say that using our private businesses, we can also shape the world? Because my plan is to use my business to serve the needs of the community by making products that are relevant and needed by them. And then obviously taking my profits as well yeah. and giving back at some point. But in your experience, have private business people been doing that? For yes. the last 40 years, you've been in business. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, so our program, sir, is the aquaponics business program. We are doing fish farming and, oh, uh, very good. and uh, vegetable farming using water. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All the best. From the very beginning, as I mentioned, you have to divide the share of your business with the intention. Let me give you an ex another example for business. Ten young people uh, wanted to make a chicken farm. I mentioned this many times. And at that time in the 60s, they want the capital money for up to 2,000 pounds. They found nine people to give them 1,800 pounds. Okay? And they were looking for the partner number 10. For a week or two or a month or two, one of them came back and said, I found them. 
and this 200 pounds. He said, who is he? He said, it's God. It is God. You got it? Quite often, with the chicken and the chicks, in the first year they don't make profit because they die. Small chicks die. In the first year, they make profit because they have another shareholder with them. If you start from the first step at the right direction with a good intention, don't worry about the loss. But don't change the relationship between you and him because he wants you to serve the community. He wants you. So no matter who is in the community, the more you give to the community, the more God will give you back again. More and more and more and more and more and more and more. And they mentioned the example of this one who was actually the dealer of Toshiba with the factory of Toshiba in the whole Middle East, which started as a young boy with 30 pence. And when he died, he had a holding company who had got 15, uh, holding group of good 15 companies and factories. So when you keep this relationship all the time and somebody keep reminding you, you have to get this out for the community. Even, I'll give you another example. Somebody, when he was making a loss, loss, halas, is this business is losing. He said, when I lose, actually, uh, what do you call lose what? Uh, mid loss, I give to the community. Because I knew that when I give to the community, you know, as I most need to the money, God will give me more. And they became also another billionaire. Try to match or try to link or try to understand the relationship between you and who created you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you are losing money, give money. No matter what. Just give. Giving has got multidimensional, diverse ways of giving. And you don't know that the woman who is crying at home or the orphan who has no food for two or three days, when he received a piece of bread from you, if he or she or him or he or she will make a prayer for God for you, even without seeing you, how much this blessing will be impacting the growth of your business. Never lose the focus on who created us. Because he is the provider. And he is the giver. And he is the forgiver as well. And he is the one who bless your family, yourself, your life, and the people to come around you. I conclude with one thing. Two uh, Asian uh, shops, and yani takeaway shops. I'm not going to mention the names. One of them was a very decent man for the last six years now, his business in, 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 in UK. The other one who was actually in, in, on, on, on one road, one of the high streets for the Muslim community in, in Birmingham. The other one came and opened a shop next to him to compete with him. Because the man was in this shop for about 10 years, but the other one came and said, okay, I'll be next to him because I'd like to take uh, some of his business. With the name of Allah, Wallahi, I was going to buy some what's called, samosa, bakura during Ramadan. One shop, there was a queue of men and women from the, uh, from the shop out to the middle of the road. The second one, Nobody in his shop because of the intention. Because of the intention. There's no publicity. There's no political power. So the intention makes you to go to the good man with good quality product. And the intention does not let you go to the bad man with maybe a good product as well. So look after this and thank you for discanning me. So I've got boiler and what else? And the boning. Yes, come on. This group did not speak. And this group did not speak. That's right. <laughs>
You see, I love Africa. And Africa is being stolen by whoever calling themselves civilized, advanced individuals. Civilization is about building community. Civilization is about empowering community. Civilization is about investing the money of the community for the community. Not taking the gold and the diamond and whatever you call it and we leave me living in the wilderness and they live some other life. This is civilization. Yes, these two tables. Come on, sister. Oh, two sisters. Bismillah. Come together. <laughs> who is the deboning and who is the descanning? <laughs> Are you deboning? Are you deboning me? <laughs> he takes the he takes the flesh from the from the bones. Huh? <laughs> this question. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate to be standing next to you. As no, 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 no. <laughs> It's, 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 it's me. I appreciate that. Yes, we are, we are very fortunate to be visited by you. And our question as the Waterloo team, we would like to ask, how did you grow your business or your foundation and how did you scale your, your growth? Thank you. As the first question, for deboning. <laughs> <laughs> and you're descending, huh? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, our question is, uh, people define success in their way. So some define uh, people with big cars and money successful. How do you define success? Wallahi al-Azim, it is a high level intellectual question. I thank both of you. What was your question again? Ms. Deboning. Ah, scale. In the first five years, from 84 to 89, we were legging the country called UK. Going from street to street, from shop to shop, from mosque to mosque, from town to town, from market to market, from city to city. To let the community to know that we exist as a starting organization. I mentioned this yesterday in the mosque. During Ramadan, you know how Muslims celebrate Ramadan here? Big food, meat, chicken, what else? Gazelle, crocodile, what else? Sharks, <laughs> everything. And those young people at your age never spend a day with their family during Ramadan. The children never saw their parents, their father. The wife never had any breakfast or iftari with the father. And they come back after Ramadan because they were going around to spread the message and to be with the community and to start to stand in the middle of the mosque to be questioned, grilled, boiled, skinned, roasted from day one. So when the community saw you there, they're still remembering these days. They came to us. And we used to raise the half a penny, the penny, the pound. And we used to carry all these big sacks of coins. We're very happy to raise 100 pound or 200 pound from a big mosque. Because at that time, the community was very small and very poor. From there, we started to look outside UK. There is the vision and the strategy. And we said, let us actually look at the areas where we can raise money for the poor people. So we started to register offices in Europe, in Belgium, Holland, uh, Germany, uh, what else? Uh, France, to raise fund because Africa needs money. Bangladesh needs money. Pakistan needs money. Where we're going to get the money from. So you have to balance between the growth of the offices where you raise the fund from and the growth of the offices where you spend the money on them. 
This was actually, you know who helped us during this mid-90s period? Young people at your age and younger at your age. We used to use university students, secondary school students to help us because everything was manual. You carry the post box, the envelopes, not the post box itself, the, the envelopes in the, in, 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 in the sack and go to the post box and deliver five, six hundred, seven hundred envelopes. We buy the envelopes, we fold the papers, we seal the envelope, we stick the stamp and to carry the envelopes to the post box. Manual. We design the leaflet, manual. We walk sometimes because we don't have money to buy a car. Or sometimes we take a bus <coughs> at that time. We used to sleep in the houses of people to save the money of the hotels. This is the second period from the mid-90s to the 2000. Then the global dimension came to us because we decided in 1993, to register Islamic Relief at UN. And who registered it was a fight. Not easy. The name was Islamic, and the man was with a beard, and the color was my color. And one ambassador was blocking the way. But I uh, didn't say I. We managed to stand up on this Friday and said, enough is enough. We we'll give you what you want. Tell us what you want from us. Then the one who supported us was not a Muslim ambassador, was a Catholic ambassador from Ireland. So here in this ocean of humanity, not only the Muslim will help you, but anybody can help you if he or she believes that you are honest. Okay? And the growth, the multi-dimensional growth, also have challenges because people hate us. Says that we are converting people to Islam, which we are not. We are radical, which we are not. We are extremists, which we are not. We are terrorists, which we are not. And you have to meet this kind of media attack on you, challenges, and take them to court while you are growing and stabilizing your movement. Not because you are doing humanitarian work, we will leave you alone. Even some of the Muslims are attacking us. It's not only one side, multiple sides. So if you maintain focusing on your objective and do not cross the line, the red line or the black line to this side or the side, nobody will be able to get you. You'll be going stable and forever, inshallah. Sister, what was your question? How do you define success? Success is not money. <coughs> Most important Measure of success is the community recognition. They sustain and stabilize your business. With your good credibility in the community, I give an example of another man who was a businessman. He was working as a salesman in one of the actually uh, shops. And he was very nice, good humor, have good, good, good humor and very honest. And he decided to have his own business. No capital. He borrowed four or five thousand, this is at the sixties, from a family. And he took them as partner, actually. And those people said 50-50. I'll give you the four thousand pounds. And uh, we'll take 50% of the profit. You, because you work, would get 50% after admin cost would be taken out and take 50%. This man with the vision, he used some part of the money, which is the loan, to refurbish the shop. Okay? That's number one. Khalas. He has this plan. Then he left the other half, which is about 2,000 2,500 pounds, in the safe. One of his colleagues told him, why don't you buy, uh, buy goods with this? He said, no, 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 no. I have my credibility as a success. When he was working as a salesman, people trust him. And I will take goods on credit. And they took goods in credit from everyone. 
and they put this 2,500 pounds in the safe as a strategic reserve fund. This is success. Your name, that's why sometimes when you sell the brand, it might be 1 million, 2 million, 100 million, isn't it? Isn't it? Is that right? And there are some brands does not have any, any value. So your credibility is measured by the people who give you on loan because they trust you and this success. Actually, and here, coming back to honesty, I can make a quick sale. Okay? I can take this one, X stock, expiry date is, is gone, and it changed the, what do you call it, the, the paper? The label. The label. Now, I keep, I keep the name, but I change actually the dates. And I make 100%. I can make it once, twice, make all the millions, isn't it? But one day I'll be discovered and they'll go down the drain. An example of one of the greatest businessmen in the Middle East, actually, he was dealing, unfortunately, in arms deals. He used to have his helicopters, his yachts, his ships, everything. And he thought one day, that he's not going to be going downhill. He treated one poor man, which was like the guard or the cleaner, badly. He started to lose the business and he lost everything. And he went to, you, you think that because he was having all these facilities that it's a success. No. This man made a prayer because he had been insulted the cleaner or the guard without mentioning the name of the man because it's a very well-known story in the Middle East. He became very poor to a point that he lost everything and he was going to one of his colleagues to give him monthly, what do you call it, uh, uh, contribution. And every month when he used to the house of his colleague, of his friend, that his friend respect him and uh, come out to give him the check. One day, his friend was very busy. And he knocked the door. And when he opened the door, you know who was giving him the check? The cleaner. See the difference? The one who was treating you badly. Manner is a, a, is a part of your success. Sometimes we don't measure it. We don't measure it. Because we want quick win. Quick win. Never stay in the community. Do you know the mahogany tree? How old is this mahogany tree? 20 years, 50 years, 60 years. You know that in the Equatoria, there's another tree called Tabaldi, which goes in the Equatoria, three, four hundred years. You know the grass? Take about a week or two or three to grow. Which lasts more? The oak, the mahogany, and the tabaldi. Be one of them. To be the forest or to protect the forest because you have the value, you have the quality, you have the vision, you have the credibility, and you have the integrity. A business without this is not a success story. And money will come. Money will come. One of the Indian was in, uh, in Dubai. His, his daughter told me, Indian businessman. You know who was the one who backstabbed him and stolen all his wealth and ran away to Canada or America? Without, you, may, you might know the name, but actually, his brother. To a point that the man died because of the shock. He was living at this standard. And he lost everything. And his brother ran away with the money. Is it a, is it a win? Well, five or six million dollars at that time, about 20 years ago. His daughter and his wife stood firmly to rebuild the business again. And they did. 
and they build the company again, and they are winning. Whether his brother is making loss or not is beside the point. It's not what. But actually, when you fail, stand up. Don't, don't stop when you fail. Believe that the failure is for you to re-entrench yourself for the higher jump. <coughs> for the higher jump. Many, many times in the running race, you found somebody failing at the beginning and everybody is ahead. You have seen it in the, in, the, in, the, in the Olympic and in the World Championship and they won. Because they insisted to win. They had the quality to win. Failing is not failure. Failure is when you believe that you cannot succeed. But the foundation of success is morality, integrity, credibility of you and your intention, and the blessing of the community around you. You got it? If you want to become a billionaire, huh, do that and they'll come to you, to take the money from you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Albena, for sharing your life experiences with us. I'm sure they'll never forget this for the rest of their lives. I'd love to come back again. Inshallah, why not? Inshallah. Why not? Uh, it's uh, time for our lunch now. So uh, you have to make your way.